Okay, so here we have a simple stoichiometry problem. I didn't want to use one of the exact same ones that I'm giving you on the sheet, the sheet. So I chose a different one, this reaction, which you may recall we've seen before. Remember this one? We saw this one in one of our demos, one of our first demos. Remember, it was lithium, sodium, potassium versus water. Well, sodium versus water, okay, the alkali metal demo, pretty dramatic one, as I recall. Sodium versus water, right? I decided in this case to put the water upside down. We're so used to seeing it like the Mickey Mouse shape. I decided, well, it could be in any orientation, so might as well flip it. All right, so let's see. Let's do some other things. What kind of reaction would this be? Um, what kind of reaction? I have a pure metal coming along, and it's fighting over something. What's it fighting over? This is tricky. To think about what it's fighting over, you got to think about water in a certain way. You got to think about water like this, like an organic chemist thinks about water, and then you can actually break water. So this is actually your prize. And I guess in the in the one here, I have it upside down, of course. But this is your prize. Does anybody remember what that's called? Do you remember what this one's called? It's the functional group of alcohols. It is hydroxide. This is hydroxide. So they're fighting over hydroxide. Oh, they're fighting over it. So who's going to win? Let's see. Well, sodium is almost at the very top of this series. Potassium beats sodium, but sodium is number two, silver metal. But where is, um, what's it fighting with here? What's it fighting with? Oh, hydrogen? Hydrogen, way down here. So I think we know who's going to win, right? Don't you know who's going to win this fight? It also kind of gives away the reaction type if we talk about it that way. If it's a battle between a pure element and a compound, okay, over the prize, over the anion, let's say, in this case, uh, which one of these would it be? Hmm. Oh, yeah. It would be, bing, 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 displacement. So, look, that's A. This is B, C. Well, you know, pretty much. And then you get the new compound that includes A. So this gets kicked out. What's get, what gets kicked out? What would we call that? Hmm. Let's wait a second. I want to read the question. And then, of course, uh, oh, no, this was not one of the ones I included in my in my specific examples of reaction types, but it's kind of like this one here, displacement, okay? So we've got the displacement reaction, and of course, oh wait a second, you know what we have to do here? We have to obey the law, don't we? We always have to obey the law, the law of conservation of mass. So what do we have to do to obey the law of conservation of mass? Even before I read this equation, what do we need to do here? Mm, let's make sure this equation balances. This is the equation we're using. So let's see here. We've got sodium, one sodium there, one sodium there. All right, that's fine. We've got two hydrogen there, and then we've got two hydrogen there. Oh, wait, three hydrogen. Uh-oh, notice three hydrogen on this side. So that's, that reminds me of something. Two on one side, three on the other. What does that remind me of? Um, oh, yeah, odd even. So what do you do when there's an odd number and an even number? What do you do? You make the odd side even. So this is the side that is odd. And in fact, really, there's a portion of this that is making it odd. Not the whole thing is making it odd. Really, it's just, well, these, this is an even number. It's this one. That is what is making the problem. This one is making it odd. So what I should do is double it. Let's double that. And now... We've got an even number of hydrogen, so we might be able to balance it. What does it mean when I put that two there? This is what it means. I don't know if, I, I don't know if this is all going to fit in the camera. I'll try to fit this in the camera. This is what it means when you have a two coefficient. Remember that a coefficient, coefficient multiplies by the whole chemical. So this two multiplies by the NaOH. It means you have, these are two discrete molecules, two sodium hydroxides. Get it? That's what that two means. Okay. But now we've thrown off the sodium. We've got two sodium on this side. So how can I fix it over here? How can I fix it over here? Oh, I know. I can double that sodium. Double that. A lot of times when you start doubling, you have to kind of continue to double. Not necessarily everything, but usually it takes more doubling. And that means we have two sodium atoms over here. So there's two sodium atoms here. 
two sodiums atoms here. Um, we've got a total of one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. And you can see that two times one is two plus two more. There's four total on this side. So we need four total on that side. So how are we going to get four total hydrogen atoms on that side? Oh, guess what? Another two. We have to double, double the water, excuse me. And because we're showing the water um, upside down, you might not recognize it as much that way. I might have to have not have enough room here. Okay, so there are two water molecules. I'm trying not to stick those together, but one of them might be off the camera. And then let's see, that's four hydrogen there. See, two times two is four. Okay, there's a total of two hydrogen, two hydrogen, four hydrogen there. There's two oxygen there. There they are. There's two oxygen there. There's two sodium there, two sodium there. That's what we mean by balancing. That is balanced. So I could put a little check mark right there or on my sheet that is now balanced. So now that it is a balanced equation, we can talk about things like, oh, I don't know, stoichiometry. Because remember, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. Well, here's our chemical reaction. So now we're going to talk about some numbers. Quantities are numbers, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So now I think it's about time that I finally read the question. I've done all that before even reading the question. Isn't that funny? Okay. Um, according to the above reaction, how many moles of hydrogen would be produced when 37.0 moles of sodium react? Okay. So which one of these is the hydrogen? Oh, here's the hydrogen. And how do I know that? Because that's the form we find hydrogen in. Hydrogen is always going to be H2. Kind of like oxygen is O2, hydrogen is H2. Okay. So what we're looking for is how many moles of that. That's going to be our answer, right? When 37.0 moles of sodium react, and of course, as you know, Na, natrium is sodium. So we're talking about 37 moles of this going in. How much of this is coming out? All right. So whenever we have a problem like this, the best thing to do is always to write the quantity that you're given. You're always given some quantity. So let's just write down this quantity that we're given, and you've got to write 37.0, and then you've got to write your unit, of course. Write your unit, okay, moles, but now we have an additional requirement because now, okay, we're dealing with a whole equation. We're dealing with more than just one chemical. So now we have an additional requirement. We're going to identify the chemical of our answer and even in our problem. Let's just start doing it all the time in general. It's a good idea. Okay, so we're talking about that many moles of sodium, which is Na. Now I can just put Na like that. That's perfectly fine. Or I could put a little of. I'll put a little of there. That makes a lot of people feel more comfortable with it. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever, whatever suits you. Okay. So now let's see, we've got to go from one chemical to another. Uh-oh. How are we going to get from one chemical to another? Well, there's only one way to jump from one chemical to another chemical, from one chemical to another chemical in a chemical equation. You should know what that is now. You should know what that is. What is it? That is the mole ratio. The mole ratio is the only way to jump from one chemical to a different chemical in a stoichiometry problem in a chemical equation at all. It's the only way to jump or even to compare chemicals, honestly. It's not just for jumping, it's even for comparing them. Okay, for anything you want to relate to chemicals on a fair basis, you've got to use the mole ratio. So I'm going to need the mole ratio from this equation for the two chemicals we're dealing with. The one that we're starting with and the one that we're supposed to find out about, which is the hydrogen. Okay, so that means all I have to do here is I have to multiply by a conversion factor. The conversion factor is a mole ratio which means I know for sure it's a mole ratio. It's going to be moles over moles. That's why it's a mole ratio. But the chemicals will be different. Okay, we're talking about two different chemicals. I also know which chemical is going to go on the bottom. How do I know that? Because look what we're starting with. We're starting with information about sodium. Well, we don't want to keep information about sodium. That's not our answer. We've got to get rid of that unit. The only way to get rid of a unit is to divide by the exact same unit. So if we divide that by moles, I, I'm not, I don't have room here for the of, it's going to write moles Na. So I wrote it slightly differently. This is the same thing. Moles of Na, moles Na. 
Okay, those, account, those mean the same thing. Well, and then if I'm jumping to the hydrogen, well then the hydrogen, H2, has to go on the top. And again, it's too small to write the of right here. I didn't leave myself room. I could have written the of, that's fine, okay? So now what numbers go here? Well, the numbers go from the chemical equation. So I've got to be very careful and look which number comes as the coefficient. Remember, the coefficient, the big number, before the sodium would be the 2. So a 2 goes there. And then what's the coefficient before the hydrogen? Oh, wait, we forgot to put anything there. So what does that mean? If there's nothing there, is that a 0? Should I put a 0 there? What is it? Oh, yeah, remember, what's that invisible number that we leave out all the time in chemistry? It is a 1. It's an invisible 1. So, whoosh. now, by the way, if you had wondered, like, why didn't he divide this whole equation by 2? If you wondered why I didn't divide by 2, it's because this is a 1. So you can't divide that by 2. You could divide all the other ones by 2, but you can't divide a 1 or you'll get a fraction and you can't do that. So really, this is almost, we're almost there, really. It's just these problems are that simple. It's really just using the mole ratio. That's all I wanted you to get practice with. And then that's going to equal something. So let me point out that when we, uh, moles of Na divided by moles of Na, whoosh, those units will cancel. And then whatever I get over here is going to be, units are going to be that, whatever's left in the numerator. It's going to be a number, and then it's going to be, I already know, it's going to be moles. And I'll put the of back in now, so we're right, we have more room now. Moles of H2. So notice that it doesn't make much difference if you put moles H2 or moles of H2, same thing, okay? So 37.0 times 1 is, of course, 37.0. And then you've got to divide it by 2, okay? So that would be 18.5, correct? Yes, 18.5, and that'll be my number right here. 18.5, because 18 times 2 is 36, right? And you need another 0.5 to make it 37, all right. 18.5 moles of H2. So notice what I've done. Have I, have I written my unit? Have I written my unit? Yes. Have I identified my chemical with my answer? Yes. Do I want to double check that that's the one it was asking for? Oh yeah, I do want to do that. How many moles of hydrogen? It was asking for moles of hydrogen, moles of hydrogen, yes. So is that my final answer? Well, for the regular class, that's your final answer. Oh yeah, but there's a special requirement for the honors class. In the honors class, we always have to put, well not usually, have to put our answers in scientific notation. I found this placard now, okay? So let's see, let's put that in scientific notation and that'll be our final answer. So I know I'm gonna to have to move the decimal that way, so let me rewrite it. 1.85, what would that be? Times 10 to the zero? What would that be? Times 10 to the negative something? Oh, no, 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 no. This number is bigger than one, so it's gotta be a positive. Let's see, how many times did I move the decimal? Bing, one, so 10 to the first power. But you still need your unit when you write it in scientific notation, please remember, that's not enough. You still need the unit just as much as you did before, and you still need to identify the chemical. So I could write of H2. Now, I probably want to box that. Probably want to put a square around it. That is my answer. So these problems are actually pretty easy, really. There's only like, it's sort of like a one-step problem. We just need this one factor. We take our original information. We multiply it by that conversion factor and you get your answer. That's like a one step problem. Later, we're gonna see problems that have many, many more steps than this. And of course I showed my work, but that's all there is to it. Showing your work, this is it. That's showing my work. Okay, so this is how you do a simple stoichiometry problem. So why are we doing nine of these when they're all kind of just like this? Why are we doing nine of these things? Well. It's just to make sure that you feel very comfortable doing the mole ratio so that you really feel like no big deal, no sweat. And so when we start adding things on the beginning and the end of the problem and we get to like three-step problems or three-step problems with limiting reactants and things like that, well, then you won't be like confused. Because as long as you got the heart of stoichiometry, as long as you got the, this is really the heart of it, the central step, then the rest of it will make more sense, okay? So in the next level, we're going to be adding molar mass. Notice how 
We never even talked about the mass of any of this stuff, which is pretty impractical because how are we going to measure any of these if we don't use the mass? Interesting, right? Okay, so that's an example that is much like, exactly like the format of the simple stoichiometry problems. Okay, guys.